Well, let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42 is what we're going to look to today. You can entitle the message, Refusing to Retaliate. Refusing to Retaliate. I ask the question today, do you have the right to get even? Do you have the right to retaliate to someone who has done you wrong? Well, let's let the Lord answer that question today. Amen. And I'll go ahead and let you know, no, we don't. We don't have the right to retaliate. We, vengeance is not ours. It actually belongs to the Lord. But let's do this, if you will. Let's read this text first, and uh, then we'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Verse 38. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek... Turn to him the other also, and if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. If you will, let's bow to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray today that you would help us to, uh, as we always need to do any time we look to your word, that we would rightly divide your word, that we would correctly understand your word in context in the section and in context in the passage, but also in context of all of what you've already said in your word as uh, considering the whole of the counsel of God. And just help us, we pray, to appropriately understand your word that we might appropriately apply your word today in our lives. May we live lives that are, are truly pleasing to you, that are truly living lives as uh, a witness each and every day. We pray that if there's someone here that's lost, though, that they would be saved before it's too late, that they would repent of their sin and trust in the one and only Savior, Jesus, and that they would be saved. But for all of us, we pray that you would help grow us closer to your son today through the study of your word and please use me as a vessel and it's in Jesus precious name we pray amen as we've read this text uh, you I know have heard this text before you've uh, maybe heard a phrase of this text before and uh, you may have heard it uh, appropriately used you may have heard it inappropriately used however let's do this let's look at it verse by verse and uh, really try to get the proper understanding of it today. It, it actually, we're going to address the, the idea that sometimes the Word of God is misunderstood. Uh, we even see that the people in Jesus' day misunderstood and misapplied even the Old Testament. Uh, and now we also know that today we might even be guilty of misunderstanding and misinterpreting even maybe Jesus' teaching that we even look at today. But may we have a desire to uh, appropriately understand what Jesus is truly trying to teach us here. It started out in verse 38. It says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Pause there for just a moment. Think about that phrase, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. I'm going to ask you this question. Where was that originally from? Uh, well, where it was originally from was actually the Old Testament law. We actually just studied that uh, last Sunday night in our Exodus study uh, where we're going through the book of Exodus. And where this actually, again, finds its context is this is speaking of God giving uh, the, the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, uh, judgment of criminals, get this, that was actually to be enforced by the judges uh, those, again, in that, that, that position that they were to use the law in this instance that was given, this eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, and it really meant this. It was simply that uh, the, crime, the, excuse me, the punishment was to fit the crime. That's what it means, that eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, that it should be fair and right judgment, that the punishment given by the judges to the one committing that crime needs to fit the crime. It don't need to be way less than it should be. It doesn't need to be way more than it should be. So get that. That is where that verse originally came from. Uh, and however, here's the problem today. Jesus is actually addressing the people in his day, their misinterpretation of that phrase, their misuse of 
that phrase. So I just told you the uh, original uh, intent of that law. It was to be used by who? Judges for criminal acts, right? However, do you know what the people of Jesus' day were guilty of? They were making it and uh, twisting it and falsely applying it to themselves to give themselves a right to go out and retaliate. They again twisted it, applied it to themselves, and they actually said not only was it their right, they were acting like they were commanded by God to do it. They were, they were acting like they were obligated to do it, right? For any time that someone gave them offense, any time that someone rubbed them the wrong way, they felt like they were obligated to go immediately run out to retaliate and to get even. That's a wrong interpretation, amen? So again, they failed to do this. They failed to go look at that phrase in the Old Testament to study out the context of it and to see the context in which it applies that yes, it's a criminal case and it was to be carried out by the judge and it's not for a personal vendetta, amen? So that's how it should have originally been intended so that's actually, get this, that's what Jesus is addressing. These next few verses we're going to look at, he's going to give several different examples. He said, first, you've heard that it hath been said, right? Uh, we know that the original phrase from the Old Testament, what it said, but they also have heard others say it, but use it in the wrong way. But now he's going to say, but I say unto you. Listen, this is Jesus, amen? This is God in flesh. This is the Word who became flesh. Amen. This is, again, the authority. And He is teaching. Guess what? When, when it says, but I say unto you, we really need to listen up because, listen, He is the authority. And, and know this, He's not contradicting the Old Testament. He's not doing away with that original law uh, that the judges were to uh, enact to have fair judgment. He isn't doing away with that. But he is doing away with their false interpretation of it. Amen. But he, we need to listen. Why? Because he's the authority. Amen. The word is the authority. Amen. Is that the authority in your life? Jesus is actually preaching this great sermon on the mount. And he's speaking to kingdom citizens. To believers, I ask you today, are you a believer? Are you a kingdom citizen? Are you not only a, a citizen of the, this kingdom here, maybe in America, or this kingdom here on earth, but are you, a king, are you a citizen of the kingdom of God? Amen? Well, if we are, we need to listen to the teaching of the King Jesus. Amen? But really, don't forget... And that's why I mentioned when we try to rightly divide, correctly understand the text, you've got to understand the context. So please, as we go into these next few verses, as he gives examples of what he's teaching, do not forget the context. Do not forget that what he just now addressed is that false interpretation that they were giving themselves the right to retaliate. Amen? It's all about him teaching that we don't have the right to retaliate. Amen? So again, that is something that you don't need to overlook as we go into the next verses. Otherwise, you won't even understand the next verses. What does it go on to say, if you will? 39, it says, but I say unto you, again, Jesus, the authority, speaking king, speaking to Subjects today. It says that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Pause there for a minute. We need to dissect and understand a, a few of these phrases here that we might not misunderstand them. Because let me tell you today, many have misunderstood this today and have misapplied this today and have really uh, the wrong worldview because of their misinterpretation of it. And that's a problem. So just like the people of Jesus' day had twisted and misapplied the Old Testament, we don't need to be guilty of now misunderstanding and misinterpreting Jesus' explanation of it. Amen? We don't need to do that. What do these verse, this verse mean? 
One, let's look at this smite on the right cheek. You might say, well, listen, if someone comes up and smacks me, on, if someone hits me, comes up and just absolutely slugs me on the side of my face, am I just supposed to get back up to my feet and, and turn to the other one and let's just let them have a heyday on me? Is that what it's speaking about? You might also, the question might come to mind, does this mean that we should not have self-defense today? Does this mean that we are getting this to have a completely radical, um, pacifist view to all of life? Is that what God is telling us to do today? Again, I'll tell you, many have misapplied that. They might also say, and then we'll look at this verse in just a moment, that portion that said, resist not evil. Some have misapplied that too. And they may say, look, so if someone's doing evil to us or to someone else, does that mean that in no sense ever we're never to stand up against evil? Listen, if that's the case, we'd be in some trouble. Amen? Here's actually what smite on the right cheek is, is, is representing. Get this. It is done shame, to shamefully insult someone. Again, in their culture, to slap them on the cheek, uh, the cheek again, it's an, it's an open insult. It would be today. It's not as so much done today, maybe not. But that's what, get this, it's representing. It is a open, a public, and a shameful insult. And wouldn't it be? It would. So get, get this, remember, what's the main context? Retaliation. What's the topic that Jesus is teaching on and trying to co correct? It's retaliation. Listen, don't misapply this to mean that a person cannot defend themselves. Do you know that Scripture actually says in the Word of God, Old Testament and New, it actually commands us as believers, you, you had better defend the helpless. Do you know that? We're living in a generation that wants to completely forget that wants to forget that for anybody, especially for maybe masculinity. You've heard that, today, that word today. That men should not stand in and protect the helpless. That's unbiblical. Amen. Listen, Scripture commands us that we are to stand up and to defend, listen, the helpless, the weak. Right? And there are many of those around us. We are to stand in and to resist, if you will, in that sense, Evil. So get this. What, what is he speaking of? Again, trying to appropriately understand this. I just shared what that phrase means. To It was an open insult. What other cultural open insults might you have today? You might have been insulted this week. You might have been insulted. You might, you might have someone in your life that just continues to insult you. To offend you and offend you and offend you. Well, listen, this is what Scripture is teaching us. It's talking about retaliation. It's not talking about self-defense, but it's talking about retaliation, and it's telling the believer, don't you dare go out and retaliate. Amen? Don't dare, when, when someone insults you, don't you dare just jump right back and insult them back. Amen? If someone openly insults you to your face, also don't run behind their back and start insulting them. Amen? We're not to do that. That's not, we're not to retaliate. Does that make sense to us today? Get this, it's also speaking of a general rule for our day-to-day -day offenses. That's really what it's representing. Is it, it's, not, it's not speaking about some unique extreme situation where I hope you don't ever find yourself in a, in a situation where you have to uh, defend your life or the lives of those around you. But again, that's not what it's speaking about. But there have been many that have misapplied this to mean you've got to be completely a complete pacifist. If someone wants to come and harm you or kill you and, hey, your family's there with you, and if they want to do that to you too, you better just sit down and, and just let it happen. No, that's not what God's teaching. Amen? Think about this for just a moment, that phrase, resist not evil. First, let's look at what it's, it's uh, again, not saying. Uh, it's not saying this. Uh, again, it's not saying that you, in no sense ever, are to resist evil. Okay? That's not what it's saying. Again, it's that phrase in its context. Amen? 
And the context is what? Retaliation. So really, this is literally what it would, would mean to us is do not come against, or this resist not evil, it's do not come against, don't turn against those who have done trivial offenses against you. Don't immediately become their enemy when someone insults you, amen? We would have a lot of enemies, wouldn't we? Excuse me, but then the point is don't, don't become their enemy when they insult you, right? Don't turn against them. Don't rise up against them just when they insult you. We're to still love them and to seek their best. Amen? Again, this is talking about the day-to-day -day offenses. I mentioned earlier it's not telling you don't defend. Again, that's, some have taken this one, these three little words, resist not evil. They've taken it out of its context they thrown it up there and have tried to make it their motto for all of life and applied it to every situation, right? Where we saw earlier in the Old Testament, they, they took that verse out of its context where that was to deal with, with court and judges dealing out judgment. And they took that phrase out of its context and applied it into their own everyday context. And they've given themselves the ability to Get even with everybody. That was wrong. But listen, it's also wrong to take resist not evil out of its context and apply it to all of your life context. Amen? Because really, think about that. One, he's not saying don't, you can't defend. It's also not saying that there's some that have misapplied this and say, well, I guess we can't even have a government anymore, right? If none of us are to resist evil, then I guess we can't, we can't have a government anymore. You know what's interesting? Jesus isn't contradicting the Old Testament. Do you know that? God is not going to have, a uh, again, his word given in one instance and then him completely change in the next instance and him contradict it. He's not going to do that. So if you have, if your mind and your understanding of a verse or even a phrase is completely contradicting something God has already said, you don't have the right understanding of it. Amen? And let me tell you, not only in the Old Testament, but get this, also in the New Testament, even in the New Testament epistles, meaning the church has already been established and God is giving inspired text to the church. Do you know what's still there? Government. Amen? It actually tells you to obey government, right? Do you know that God says even in the New Testament that government is what? is an agent of God for judgment and that they do not bear, get this, the sword in vain? Amen? So I'm just going to tell you, we can't have this completely unbiblical pacifist view where we say, we've got to disarm the police or we've got to get rid of all government. Do you know how much anarchy it would soon be if we did that? Amen? You already look at certain cities and certain states where they've tried that. And let me tell you, I would not want to be there a day. Right? I wouldn't even want to go visit. Do you know why, again, that there's government? Because God instituted it. Amen. Aren't you glad? We would be in far worse shape if we didn't have government. So my challenge to you, believer, is appropriately understand the word. Amen. Don't misapply the word of God and misunderstand the word of God and therefore have a maybe completely political view or, or world outlook that does not even line up with the word of God. Amen? So no, the government should not be done away with. Why? Because it's God's hand of judgment. Scripture says, again, New Testament says this. New Testament epistle says this, that they are there, put by, the, put by God there to do what? To punish those who do evil. Amen? And to reward those who do good. That has not changed. Amen? We do indeed need to pray for our government. Right? We do. We need to obey the government unless they, they go against the word of God. Amen? But so again, don't take this phrase out and just say, we've got to start making some changes. No, appropriately understand the word of God. It also, I'm going to tell you this, one of the biggest ways that you and I actually need to resist evil is through love. Amen. 
That's a big thing of what Jesus is teaching us here and also in the next passage where he's going to teach us to even love our enemy and how that needs to look. I hope you would come back next week for that. But listen, one of the biggest ways, it's not saying you've got to take away the other two ways, government or self-defense. Let's throw them out. No, it's not saying that. But I'll tell you, day to day, the biggest way that you actually are to resist evil is through love and, listen, truth. Do not do one without the other. Amen. Love and truth are in perfect balance, and you and I need both. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, in this world that we live in that is broken and that, that is evil, and you might even have people that come against you and insult you, and they do evil towards you, do you know how to dismantle that, to dismantle lies, to, to overcome evil? Do good. Amen. Love. All the lies that are going throughout our, our, our nation right now that they're trying to peddle to you and also even to our own kids, the way to break through those lies today is truth. And listen, my friend, you and I had better take a stand um, to, again, resist evil by speaking truth today in love. Amen? That's the way we resist evil. Truth will do that. It has the power to do it. So again, don't take that phrase out, my friend, and misapply it. Don't take it out of its context and put it in a context it doesn't belong. But again, what's the main point? My friend, you and me, we do not have a right to retaliate. Amen? We don't. When someone does you wrong, don't say, I'm going to go get, get, do the same right back to them. No, don't. we can't do that. What else does the verses go on to say? Verse 40, if you will, it says, And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Again, uh, think about this for just a moment. This is talking about a, a, a potential court case. Someone wants to take you to, to court. They think you've done them wrong, or maybe they are accusing you of doing wrong, and they're trying to sue you for, for this amount, if you will. Well, again, have the this is again speaking about retaliation retribution personal retribution would say if you try to take from me i will take from you but love actually says you take from me i will willingly give you more than you ask or require amen that's love that's the opposite of this heart of retribution this heart of revenge it also goes on in verse 41 and says, Whosoever shall compel thee, you've heard this one before, Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, or go with him two. Again, the context, the original audience that's being written is they were Jewish people under the oppression at this time of the, of the Roman Empire. And the Roman soldiers were inhabiting their land. And any time that they would go from point A to point B, these soldiers had the right to demand any Jewish person that's walking on the wayside with them to demand that they carry their pack for a whole mile, right? They had that right. Maybe they were taking advantage of their power, maybe. But get this, they had that right to do it. So what's this saying? Again, uh, if someone is having this attitude that, that they... That they think that they're going to demand of you something, maybe you might not even think, maybe it's your, 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 job, your job. Maybe your boss has a certain expectation of you, and they have this expectation of you, and you might think, well, is that fair? You might even think, do they have that same expectation for everyone else? You might think that, but, but think about this. Have the, have the attitude that, again, with personal retribution, you think you're going to get them back, but you deny that and have love, and love will lead you to actually give even more than they request. So again, if they ask you to go one mile, hey, go the one mile they might require, but hey, guess what? Out of your own free will, out of love, go another with them. Amen? And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you this. Think about that, that extra mile, how much you could speak about Jesus when you go that extra mile. You know that when you do that in your life, again, expectations that someone gives you and you go above and beyond, you know how great of a witness that is? Amen. That's not something that people would see in their normal everyday life. When someone does some, something like that to an individual, they will maybe begrudgingly do it or they will be hateful back to them. 
But no, believer, if you have a heart of love that says, I'll go even above and beyond that, what a witness. Amen? Share with them Christ, Stephen. But what, again, a witness that, that, that is. Again, love goes beyond the minimal requirement, what's expected. It goes past obligation. Verse 42, if you will. Give to them that ask thee, and from him that would borrow thee, turn not thou away. Think about this for just a moment. Again, I, I challenge you with all of this. Pray that the Holy Spirit would give you understanding how to apply this to your life. Okay? You might find yourself in a situation in your life right now and you're wondering what is the right thing to do. Well, listen, study this first, but also study all of the Word of God and let the Lord lead you to do what is truly right and biblical. Right? You might find yourself in a lot of different situations. There might be a hundred situations in here that you might find yourself and you might wonder, is this verse referring to this? But, but think about this for a minute. Is, is this telling you in verse 32, is this telling you that that um, it's just a written rule that if anyone wants to get anything in life, all they have to do is to go up to a Christian and that Christian must give them everything they want. Is that what this is saying? Is this, is this opening up a door for, uh, again, Christians to be the doormats of the world? Is that, is that what this is saying? I don't, I'm not convinced that that's so. Think about this for just a moment. When you look at the rest of the Word of God, you and I actually have to use discernment. Amen. So one, I think this, don't overlook this. The believer should be the, some of the most generous and giving and merciful people in the world. Amen. But I believe also with balance, there has to be discernment. Amen. Someone might come up and ask you or they think demand of you something that they really do not need. Amen. Amen. Or that that might actually cause them harm. They might ask you for money to buy something illegal. Your kids might ask you. There's going to be times where you're going to tell your kids no, amen, I hope. But again, is this saying, well, parent, Christian parents, you must give me everything I want? No. No, it's not. Think about this again for just a moment. Uh, could we... Could we be guilty when someone asks us of something? Could we be guilty to refuse to use discernment and just give, give, give? And could we actually be guilty of enabling that person to go down a destructive path? Couldn't we? We could. Again, the scripture actually tells us to, to work that we might have, amen? To work that we might eat, to work that we might provide the needs of our family, and then also get this, to work that we might also have so that others when they are in, here's the key word, need that you might give to them. Amen? So again, I believe, I'm convinced that as a believer, we do have to use discernment lest we really enable someone. And it might be you think a quick fix. Well, someone asks for something, I'll just throw it to them and keep throwing it to them and keep throwing it to them where actually what might be, might be a little harder for you or take a little bit more time for you, actually try to help them with the main problem. Amen? And encourage them with the main problem. Amen? But again, get this all in all, when someone is in true need, listen, if we have means to meet that need, we, we should. Amen? Don't overlook that. Again, we as believers, we should be the most generous people, but again, I believe in everything in life. Believers, you are to use discernment too, amen? We're to give thought and give discernment to everything that we do. Just summing up this text, and I have one more, one more few verses I want to share with you today on, on this same topic, but to sum up all that these verses that we just looked at, a child of God or a kingdom citizen, listen, I hope that's you, we are to replace vengeance with forgiveness. Amen? We're to also go a little bit further than that. We're actually to go the second mile. We're also to give compassionate giving, even by maybe those who uh, might insult you, right? We're going to talk about that more next week, that we're even to give to our enemy. We are to give even to our enemy. Think about this for just a moment. Uh, and it'll be brought out in these next few verses I'll share with you. But 
You don't only see God telling the believer. I think that's the main point today that we've got to take away and lead us into the next passage next week. We've got to take this away. God is telling you and me, refuse to retaliate. Amen? And I'll tell you this week, you might find yourself in a situation where you're very much tempted to do so. Amen? It might be with your boss. It might be with your employee. It might be with your coworker. It might even be with your own spouse. It might be with someone else in the house. Listen, you might be tempted when someone offends you or does something wrong with you, the flesh, you will be tempted to get even. But listen, believer, I think the whole point of this as believer is realizing my king, Jesus, is telling me as kingdom citizens, I must refuse what I think is my right to retaliate. Amen? I've got to refuse it. I've got to deny that. Amen? And really, it doesn't just stop there. Because these verses already led to it. The passage to come will lead to it. I'm going to read from Romans 12 in just a moment as well. And it will blatantly show this as well. But it doesn't just say, don't act in retaliation. It doesn't just call for inaction. It actually calls you to action. Not the action of retaliation, but, but the action of what? Love. Amen? And that's really what true love is. If someone offends you, listen, here's, here's the next step. One, don't retaliate. Refuse to retaliate. But also don't sit there and stew on it. Amen? And you might actually be retaliating a little bit more than you actually might think you are. The next time that you're, you're talking about the person and someone else is talking about the person and you start to talk bad about that person, you actually might be retaliating. You might think, you think about that. But here, I think, is God's key for you and I to do this. When someone offends you, yes, refuse to retaliate, but take it a step for, forward and act in love. And you know what that will do? Any root of bitterness that might be in your heart, when you actively choose to love that person, that helps you remove that root of bitterness. Amen? So I challenge you with that. Don't only stop at inaction of refusing to retaliate, but also take it further and act in love. Amen? Next, next week's passage is going to speak all about that. We will get more things that will equip us to, again, I believe we'll have opportunities of this all throughout the week, right? So let's look at this one last verses of Scripture, Romans 12, 7, 17, excuse me. It says, recompense to no man, evil for evil. One that tells you, me, you and me, believer, if we, again, are hearing God's word, he's telling us, the Lord is telling us to no man, nobody. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's your worst enemy or that it's the one who has done you the dirtiest. Don't recompense them evil for evil. Amen. When they have done you evil, don't get retribution. Don't get payback. Don't repay their evil deed for your own evil deed back to them. Amen. God is telling you and me, don't do that to anybody. Amen. Maybe someone has come to your mind right now, someone that has offended you, someone that has wronged you. Maybe God's first step for you today is right where you're at, hearing God's word that you would agree with him and, and submit to him in that. That you would say, yes, Lord, help me to refuse to retaliate to that, with that person. Help me to refuse. Maybe you have been doing it. But maybe you're, you're finally saying, Lord, I don't want to repay them evil for evil anymore. We become just as bad and many times worse when we do return evil for evil. Do we know that? Sometimes things start, and again, not every time, but sometimes things start out with a minor offense or someone does something and someone takes it the wrong way and then they think, you know what, I'm going to get even and they do far worse than what, what was originally done. Even if the, that's true many times, many times. But even if that's not the case, maybe someone really did do you dirty. Do you know what you're responsible for? You're not responsible for what they do, but you're absolutely responsible for what you do. Amen? We are. 
But that's God's, the Lord's command to you and me, recompense no man evil for evil. It goes on to say this, provide things honest in the sight of all men. We need to be seen as Christians, honorable men and women. Amen. Where again, when you find yourselves in situations where people rub you wrong, people in the community and other believers too, they need to see you as a person that doesn't go get even. Amen. That doesn't run behind that person's back and, and, and talk all about them or, or whatever it might be. Amen. People need to see you as an honest in the sight of all men. Amen. It says, if it be possible, as much as life within you, live peaceably with all men. Do all that is within you, all on your part, to keep peace. Yes, even when they have offended you. But your heart needs to be pure towards them. It also goes on to say this, dearly beloved, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Amen? I do believe that's what this whole passage today is talking about. Refusing to what? Retaliate. Refusing to go out and get revenge. And God says it here, avenge not yourself. Believer, did that sink in? So maybe right now when maybe you've been justifying it in your situation that you think it's been okay for you to go get vengeance. No, you listen to the word of God when he says avenge not yourself. Amen. That's all of us. That's every situation. Don't avenge yourself. It says, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith who? The Lord. Amen. So listen, that really I think we need to let sink in today. So if you find yourself in a situation right now where you're finding it hard to forgive someone and you have been going behind their back or to their face or on social media or in the gossip club, whatever it might be, or maybe you've even been going far and beyond that and you've been acting out to try to get even with them. My friend, listen, would you deny that? today, that vengeance? Would you confess right now in your own heart, Lord, that is not my place. Amen? You know who, whose place we actually, you think you did, you think that person did wrong, do you think about this for a moment? When you step in that place of vengeance, do you know what you're actually, who you're actually offending? You're actually trying to step in God's place. Do you know that? So you think that someone has done you wrong and you think you have the right to go get vengeance? You just think when you step up and say, I'm getting even, you are trying to move God out of his place and, and, and step into a place that is not yours. Amen? Amen? If anything, let that sink in today. Take that to heart today. Relinquish what you thought was your right, which isn't, relinquish that desire to get even and say, Lord, that is yours. It is not mine. Amen. It says in verse 20, therefore, if thine enemy get this, this will actually lead us into next week's passage as well. But Romans, I love that. Romans 12 speaks on this, these same topics today. It says, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. And if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. But, but not, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Again, think about that for just a moment. Again, this is not talking about that no one has the right to self-defense. This is not saying that, that government has to be ripped and dismantled of the power given to it by God. No, this is talking about everyday personal offenses. Listen, or anything that might come in your life, you and I cannot go get even. Amen? They have done something. You can't just run out there later and go start lashing back at them or, or doing something else. It actually tells you that, um, that do this instead. Refuse that desire to get vengeance. Say it is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. And get this, trust him for it. That's the key. Trust God that he's got that taken care of. Amen? And that he will handle that in a far better way than you and me. And then you act 
this way instead, love your enemy. Amen? Even if your enemy hunger, feed him. Uh, even if he needs drink, if he's thirsty, give him drink. Amen? That is that acting in love. And then it also says, you know what that will do to them? It will heap coals of fire on their head. So again, maybe they have been doing you wrong. Maybe they have sought to abuse their power. Maybe they have sought to, to uh, take advantage, whatever it may be. Listen, if you choose to still love them, that will be like coals on their head. They won't be able to stand. Really, even get this, I believe they will realize what they've been doing to you has been wrong. Amen? And it will blow their mind and really irk them, if you will, that you, for some weird reason, can still love them after what they've done to you. Amen? But do you know that that's a witness? Amen? We look at these situations, and we've all been in them where we've been hurt. And we, we, we sometimes we do. We throw a pity party. I know I've been there too. And we think, how dare they and how bad this hurt me. And all the attention is on herself. But do you know how much of a great opportunity it is for you to use that situation to show the love of Christ and to share with them Christ, amen, to witness to them even in that situation? What a powerful witness opportunity. It actually says that, but uh, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good, right? So again, that retaliation says, I'll get even, I'll return evil for evil. But you know what? That makes you be overcome of evil, amen? You've stooped to the level of doing evil, and evil's overcoming you. But if you refuse to do that, and you choose to act in love... You are actually overcoming any evil they might have done, and you're actually overcoming the problem and, and the evil, amen? And do that again. The only way to do that is not by getting even, but is by doing good, is by showing love, is by speaking truth, amen? Let me challenge you with this. One, I, I challenge you to come back next week and hear as God Christ's teaching goes into teaching you and me specifically how to love our enemy. Amen? Do you need help with that? I do. Do you need help with loving someone that might be a little hard to love? Well, come back next week, if you will, and let God equip us for that. Amen? But let me challenge you with this today. Aren't you glad that, again, we're talking about offenses? And truth is, we've all sinned against a good and perfect God. Amen? We all have. All are sinners. None is righteous, no, not one, right? Aren't you glad that God has been loving and patient to you and me? Man, if, if, if God was uh, just every day getting us, getting us back for our every offense, we would be in some bad shape, wouldn't we? But do you know that God loves you? Yes, there's times where he judges. He is judged. That's his place. There is time with you as believers that he will chasten. Amen. He is the father. That's his place. Amen. But aren't you glad that God has so much love for all of us? He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So I want, I want to challenge you with this. No matter who you are right now. No matter what you came in here with, no matter what sin you might be dealing with, maybe you're even dealing with vengeance right now. Whatever it might be, you know this is that God loves you so much that he is calling us all right now, all that might, maybe you might, here might be lost, he's calling you to repent of your sin. He's calling you to trust in his only begotten son to be saved today. Amen. He has given you a chance for all your sins to be pardoned. Jesus is the one that went to the cross to deal with your sins and mine. He paid fully the price for our sin, he, to cover our sins, to wash our sins away, and that blood could be applied to you right now if you would believe on the Son. Amen? So I challenge you, if, if, if you know, maybe the, God, maybe the Sermon on the Mount just has shown us our sin. I hope it has. It's shown me mine. I hope it has shown us without a shadow of a doubt we're sinners. And we're in desperate need of the Savior. Amen. If God's convicting you to call upon the only begotten Son, listen, 
who, yes, he did die. Yes, he was buried. But you know what else? He raised the third day. Amen. And he's ascended back into the Father, and he is coming again. Amen. And let me tell you, if you want heaven, if you want salvation, if you want a right relationship with God, you must come through Jesus Christ. Amen. And the amazing thing is he's offering that invitation of salvation to you right now. What will you do with it? As we stand.